hello hello crafty peeps welcome back to my channel crafty ish Kristen. today we are going to have ourselves a little whip and chatty rant what is a whip and chatty rant you may be asking yourself whip w-i-p stands for work in progress and a chatty rant is me chatting and ranting about the goings on in my life over the last week or so my whip is from art and soul diamonds and this is the last supper i did an unboxing on this uh last week i think uh and i have already done one row and i am loving it there is a decent amount of color blocking if color blocking oh there's a piece of my hair stuck in there blood sweat and tears go into every canvas guys and hair lots of hair uh anyways i did this section it worked up really really fast uh diamonds are amazing the glue is extra sticky no slipping and sliding love to hear that what else lots of ab's and yeah it has been a joy what else what else oh i got myself some new alien putty uh, i blame mushy over at uh, dark and creepy diamond painting it is all her fault uh, but she did help me and post to get to 1000 subscribers so you know so i have the galactic alien putty and then i have this newer one and it is called ocean and i do not know if the textures are different i did not look to see what the um firmness level of the galactic is but upon first squeeze they feel very similar this one feels a little drier and if you've never seen Ilian Petty, this is what it looks like. It looks like a mess. Uh, Mushy calls it alien poo, and it kind of does look a little lunky and lumpy and chunky, uh, but I love it. This is all I use, except for ABs. I use, uh, what do you call it? An old glue dot. That, this is my AB pen. As you can see, it looks disgusting, but it works. So I'm going to attempt to load up my Care Bear pen. I think I got the auto lock <laughs> set on my phone, so it won't zoom in and zoom out every three seconds. So we're gonna go like that. I hope everybody is doing well as I am loading this up. And it is recommend, <clears throat> excuse me. It is recommended that you keep the plastic over it just so it doesn't, I don't know, dry out even more. Uh, but so I just shove that on there. But I want to use the new stuff. And so I have watched the videos about how to load Alien Putty. But, you know, we all have our own ways of doing things. So what I like to do is I kind of cut it up. And this stuff is not as, I don't think this is as firm as that stuff, which is good. But I cut up little pieces and then just kind of shove them into my multi-placer. And I use it in both ends. I don't switch between one putty or one medium in the single placer and one in the multi-placer ain't nobody got time for that guys well maybe you do or maybe you like it but for me i like to try to keep it simple and i yeah this is definitely a little bit softer than the other one because the other one i can't really use my fingernail to shove it in but this one is actually a little bit more flexible interesting and then once I get it, well, and I usually use my stabby tweezers, and I usually hurt myself at least once, and I just push it in, because it is firmer than more traditional putties. And this stuff lasts forever in your pen. I mean, I can go days, 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 days without, you know, topping it off or replacing it. And when I do need to top it off, a lot of times I will just, you know, I'll stab it and kind of poke at it to try to refresh it or to get a different uh, side loaded, you know, with like the sticky part. And if that's the case, like especially in the, the single placer end, you know how you kind of start getting a divot and it doesn't pick anything up. Then sometimes I will just put a tiny, tiny, tiny little dot of brand new putty on the top instead of taking the whole thing out and reloading it. But uh, yeah, this stuff, this stuff lasts a really long time. So, 
and now I'm going to refer to it as uh, Nyawa because it's make your own wall art. But Nyawa sounds so much more cooler in my opinion. So there is that. So as you can see, that's gonna last forever. And there is an actual, there, I, this is new. There's a QR code on the back to scan for instructions, which is kind of cool. So they've upgraded their packaging a little bit. This one, I don't know, the, the sticker is like, it's not on there straight and it kind of bugs me, but I tried to fix it. That didn't work well. So we have that. We have our pen all loaded and there's no priming or prepping. It is just ready to go. So now that looks like little alien poop over there on my table. Uh, I'm drinking strawberries and cream. Dr. Pepper, zero. I don't know if I like it. Just gonna say, because it kind of tastes like a melted Jolly Rancher got mixed in with the soda. So I'm not sure. Anyways, that is done. Next order of business, because I hit 1000 subscribers and I can say it live in the video and not just inserting a clip of myself. Thank you everyone so much for your love and support and, you know, for hanging out with me because I just figured I'd be sitting here talking to myself at my dining room table, but that is not the case. And as you can see, I'm not alone. I have a cat butt right here. Boop. So because I hit 1000, my plan was to then launch my newest Pippi the Crafty Peep sticker. So without further ado, here we go. Doo -doo -doo. So it's poolside Pippi. She is ready for summer. She's got her donut floaty. It was not intentional, but that kind of looks like Dr. Pepper. So I left it because I was like, yeah, seems about right. She's got her adorable heart sunglasses. She is ready to float into the shade and try not to get sunburned because that is what I do. So I will have a new Google Doc listed in the description box down below. And if you want your own poolside Pippi sticker, fill it out. There is also a button or like a, not a button, you know, a tab, not a tab. What is it called? Little, a little space where if you didn't get the original Pippi sticker and I still have some, you can click that and I can send you one of those as well. And yeah, so that is super exciting. So we have two Pippi stickers. Yay. What else? What else? I think that is it for stuff. Oh, no, no, it's not. It's not. I finished my little mini canvas. This is my first finish for April. Could be my only finish, honestly, but that's okay. I had so much fun with this after I learned that I cannot multi-place on double-sided adhesive. So um, maybe some people can, but uh, I can tell <laughs> I, I single placed up here and it looks so much better than uh, down there. Uh, so yeah, that was a, that was a learning curve. And I did order the Corgi with the poured glue from Fallon Gems. I do have an affiliate code down in the description box and you can get 40% off your order. Uh, but yeah, overall, it was a very nice little project, which I needed that because all my projects are giant, which is my own fault. I understand that, but, but still super cute. I think I'm actually going to try to make a frame out of maybe cardstock or something. Cause it's not very, it's not big. And I figured if I make a frame, like, you know, just some strips of cardstock basically, and you know, cut them at the angle. If my daughter wants to dot, decorate it. She can, and we can just hang it up on the wall and it is ready to be adorable. So I'm going to zoom in. We'll be right back. All right. This is a mess, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. So like I was saying, I've had to restart two times because I keep realizing things are, are weird. So I forgot to mention my supplies besides the diamond painting and the alien putty, obviously. Uh, these are my adorable release papers from Bee's Crafty Corner. She is still waiting for her new supply of papers. Uh, so she doesn't have any release papers currently listed but she does have those um what is it the vinyl like section things i don't quite know what those are has anyone ever used those 
How do they work? I'm curious, but I love release papers and I'm worried that if the vinyl thing even feels like plastic, I'm going to put this right here because I'm going to stick my arm in it. Uh, I'm worried my cats will think that, you know, I got it out for them basically. So yeah. Uh, this is a Bistro Blanks pen that I bought in a little pen de-stash from Elisa the Diamond Stitcher. Oops, see, I have a little bit too, whoa. I have a little too much putty right there. That's okay. Pick it off, put it over there so it doesn't get all over my canvas. What else? The Care Bear plate was mine as a child. And what else? I think that's it. Uh, so other diamond painting related updates. I have not done any more on my Care Bear canvas since my last video, but I will put a picture up below, up below, <laughs> up below. Uh, I will put up a picture of where I am at. I think I'm, I think I'm halfway. I don't really know. I haven't worked on it this week that I can remember, or maybe I did and I just can't remember guys. Honestly, I am, I am all over the place. And then the fairy friend, I am close to the top. I will put a picture of that one. That is the one I currently have on my easel. I would like to finish it since I did, I did technically want to work on that one for Mermaids and Magic, which was in March, but because of the, the adhesive situation on that canvas that did not really happen. Um, and there are still some spots on that canvas that like, even though this is a replacement canvas, there are some spots where the drills just literally slide right off. And I know people have said, you know, put down some, you know, like the, the diamond art club, you know, adhesive for the diamond dots. And the problem with doing that is that you will start working on a section and it will seem fine. Then all of a sudden you will put a drill down and, or like a, a row of multi-placing and it will just slide completely. So then you would have to stop, put the adhesive down, wait. And I am not going to wait because, you know, I only have certain times of the day that I really get to diamond paint. So I'm not going to wait. Um, so on my plan is to just power through the weirdly slippery sections. And then when I'm done, if drills are like, you know, more than one drill is falling off or whatever in one section, then maybe I'll put down some adhesive. Uh, but I think I will probably have to seal that painting. And I've never actually had to seal a big painting before, so that'll be interesting. Could you not play with the things on the table, please, Cat? Thank you very much. Let's see, I finished my little tape deck one. Definitely learned some stuff about double-sided adhesive, because I've never done a double-sided adhesive. Mainly that you need to not be impatient and do what I'm doing right now and multi-placing and then just kind of pushing them into place because you put them down crooked. No, it looked a lot better in the areas that I did not multi-place. So if I do get another, you know, adhesive, you know, double-sided adhesive, and I actually do have some that Joe made me that I am going to work on because I got my, I finally got my special drills from DP with sparklers. Um, so I'm going to kit that up this week and those are double-sided adhesive. So now I know single place. Don't be impatient, but it's hard. What else? I have not worked on any of my conversions this week. This week has been very, very busy and full of things. And what else? Let me look at my little list to make sure I didn't forget any important diamond painty things. I did, I did a giveaway for a premium diamond painting kit on my Facebook group. So if you're not a member, you should go join because I did a giveaway. This one was for US only, uh, but I am planning on doing an international only giveaway. Hopefully I can put that up by the end of the week. 
I just, I need to go to the post office and ask the people at the post office, um, what do I need to do to mail something to another country? Hang on, I saw a curvy one. There we go. Um, because I don't want to, I don't want to screw it up. I don't want to wrap it up a certain way and have them tell me, no, you have to do this and then have to go home and, you know, or, or mail it wrong or something and then have it get sent back to me and then have to pay all the mail it a second time because I've never mailed anything international. Uh, so I am going to do a international only. I know international people, you guys get the short end of the stick with a lot of, a lot of things because if you're in the U.S. it costs a lot to mail it out of the U.S. and if you're international it costs a lot to mail things you know other places as well so mailing stuff is just freaking expensive Ugh. I just saw that they're raising the prices of stamps again third time this in in one year third time in one year and then somebody else said that Canada is going to be raising their shipping prices. It stinks because, you know, most of the diamond painting stuff that I buy, I don't buy it in store. Our local stores don't really have much. And the stuff they do have is not stuff I want. So if I want, you know, a cute canvas or whatever, I'm going to have to order it online. And we get spoiled by all these companies offering us free shipping. <laughs> and then when we have to pay shipping, it's like, what? No. I mean, I just ordered some stuff from Amazon because I live in the land of Amazon. And I ordered a few like cast iron enamel cookware pots, right? And, you know, Amazon free shipping. If I would have had to pay to mail those to myself... They are heavy, so it would be, it would be costing me a lot. Oh, cat sees a bird. Maybe you'll be able to hear him trying to sing his song to lure the bird to him. Uh, I did get, oops, that's a little, see, a little, little piece of putty right there. It's all right. Square drills. It'll cover it. I got my paintings from the one with the diamond art. So I ordered those, I believe it was March 5th or 10th, and I just got them, and that is, it was the 20th, I think, and it says on their website, I think it said four to three, or two to four weeks, that was more like six weeks, which is fine, I'm, I don't, I'm not like I don't not have paintings to work on, but we like to get things quickly, and I just finally got a confirmation that my jaded gem shop kit that i ordered at the beginning of march will be here this friday but it's funny because i ordered that because i was like i really want a last supper painting and what am i working on <laughs> a last supper painting <laughs> so i probably will not be well i shouldn't say i won't be unboxing that and kidding it up soon because you know once i open it to look at it i want to kit it up so i just should not be allowed to open things but the weird thing okay so has any this happened to anyone else the weird thing about the the kits that i got from the one with the diamond art uh i was a little concerned i wasn't going to open them but i ordered three paintings but only two boxes came whoa almost just dropped my pen and i was kind of like what what's going on so i like okay well now i gotta open them because i want to see you know which painting is missing and they they put all three paintings in two boxes which you know is fine uh but so in one box they put two canvases and one bag of drills for one of the canvases and then in the other box they had one canvas but two bags of drills I was like, wait, what? Like, my brain was not able to fully process that information for some reason. I mean, it makes sense because, you know, you're maybe it's a smaller shipping footprint, so to speak. But if you like to have all your canvases in individual boxes, that would be kind of frustrating, I think. And if I hadn't checked, 
them. I just, you know, threw them in the closet with the rest of the diamond paintings. Uh, then I may be confused when I open one up and I'm like, wait, why is this canvas in here? Because there's no, there's no picture on the box. I put these really crooked. Nobody look at that. There's no picture on the, the box, you know, showing, you know, which diamond painting is in it or whatever. Uh, so yeah, so be aware. I, I don't know if that's standard or if, you know, the company that mails them out was just, you know, trying to cut corners. I have no clue. As long as the diamond paintings and the drills and everything are good, I am willing to, you know, give grace. We all need some grace in our lives. Okay, I'm... Those don't look as crooked on camera as they do in real life. <laughs> Ooh, because they look crooked to me. But that's okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, and my tray is yellow dog designs. See, it was, it was a weird weekend, guys. It really was. So let's see. Okay, let me look at my list so I'm not forgetting random, random things. So we did... Saturday, we uh, did a little yard work and I had to clean out my, my raised planters, uh, have a bunch of succulents, hens and chicks and all that kinds of thing. They were, they were a mess and full of weeds. And so I went out there and uh, I'm not made for gardening. I just, ugh, I don't like it. I really don't. I mean, I like taking care of a very small curated section but the whole pulling grass out of the flower beds just no it is a big old no for me so we met with our garden the garden landscape coach uh planner however whatever whatever her title is and so we kind of came up with a plan and you know she was explaining to us you know why why our garden beds look like crap uh and you know how to try to prevent them from you know, getting full of grass and all of these things and what we need to do. And, and she does have a team of licensed and bonded uh, people. So we're going to have them come and completely blitz through the problem areas uh, because they can probably do it a lot more efficiently than we can. And then we have a little area of grass that is right in front of our front door that's super uneven and lumpy and just gross looking because the moles hate us uh, and it's just full of weeds and like it's just it's just gross uh, and so they will bring so like a tractory thing and because they're going to fix another area that we have that's full of weeds and needs to be kind of spread with another layer of gravel so they're going to just basically scrape that off and then we can put down new grass soil and then that will be kind of like actual look flat and nice maybe maybe the moles are gonna ruin it but they ruin everything around here but it'll look nice for a little bit uh so that was that was kind of exciting but it's you know doing something my husband hates to do and that is spend money on you know unfun things he actually has a hard time spending money on fun things as well i do not I do not. So I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but I wanted to clean up my, my succulent beds just because, you know, I want them to do the unpleasant tasks, but man, just after being outside for maybe two hours, oh, my hands hurt so bad from the pulling of the weeds and the, and then just like the bending over. Ugh. It's like, no, thank you. I was not meant to garden. Some people thrive in the garden, but not me. I like having it look nice. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I just don't have the, the motivation and the willpower uh, to do it. And that's okay. We all have our own strengths and weaknesses. So hopefully we can get it under control. Then we can maintain it because that is the goal, right? I mean, I don't want it to be like, we're so incompetent that we can't, you know, keep the grass out. And so she was just kind of helping us, which I appreciate because I need all the help I can get when it comes to, to gardeny stuff. So I did that and my husband weed whacked 
we have five acres so it's i mean he didn't weed whack the whole thing but yeah and then he lawn mowered then we went out to dinner without children which does not happen very often and we went to a new ish steakhouse and we don't go out to like fancy dinner you know we just it's a lot of money to go out to dinner in general but fancy dinner means less food for a higher price so but we wanted to do something you know just ourselves we didn't really go out for my birthday and you know he got a, a different job at work so it's kind of like a little mini celebration if you will Ugh, but <laughs> I always forget that I always forget the fancy dinner, you know, equals like you read the you read the description and it's not going to be what you think it's going to be. I should know that by now. And so it was a Mexican steakhouse and they brought out these tortillas. They're like these little, you know, deep fried which are corner flour tortillas instead of tortilla chips. This giant thing of handmade salsa but the little tortilla deep fried things there were three of them and they were like i mean you know a mini tortilla they were covered in this kind of bean bean sauce i don't know quite what it was and then a little bit of like a what is it co I, I can't say it the you know the little like the crumbly cheese I'm going to butcher it, so I'm just not going to say it. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting, you know. That's, I should have known. Then I was like, well, let's get an appetizer, right? So there was this other thing, and it was like a piece. It said a sourdough loaf covered in cheese, beans, pico de gallo, and like cilantro, and something else. And I'm like, well, that looks, you know, good. I'm, I'm all for bread. Yeah, it was like like a like we got it was almost like a piece of garlic bread that was just covered with some salsa it was like parts of it were hot like warm hot and then parts of it were cold which the texture temperature thing was kind of like mm, i don't know about that uh but i mean it was maybe an individual piece of garlic bread each i'm like okay and so he got a steak and it was some wagyu something i don't even know uh, but it was this special and you know she said it was 14 ounces and i'm like well that sounds like a lot of meat right 14 ounces sounds like a lot so he got that and then i got the crab tacos which again my own fault that i did not read the description well, I did, but I didn't quite understand because it said, you know, like fried. So I figured it'd be like, you know, fried crab meat, right? No, it was fried soft shelled crabs. So like the whole little crab with claws and everything. I was like, oh gosh. And there were two of them and it was like 25 bucks. I was like, okay, I'll eat it. But I was like kind of picking, you know, picking stuff off. Cause, mm. And my husband's steak was, I mean, he said it was, a, he said it was really good. But there was not enough of it. <laughs> Just like, oh, geez. And so then being the, the glutton for punishment that I am, I decided, you know, she's like listing off the desserts. And I'm like, oh, yeah, the honey cake. That sounds good. Because, you know, when you go certain places, you think cake as being a big piece of cake that you can share. No. No. So this cake was not even, like the roundness was not even the size of a soda can. It was this tiny little layered cake. I mean, and, and it was artsy fartsy. Uh, but my husband could have easily put that thing in his mouth in one bite. And they brought out these tiny, tiny little spoons that you're supposed to eat it with, which was adorable. Um, but yeah, I mean, and so our bill was, I don't know, it was like $116. And he got the special steak, right? Like it was the one that was on special. The rest, I mean, it was, I think it was like 40, 
know, $42 or something like that, right? I mean, the, some of the other steaks on that menu were $100. And I just, I'm not, I'm not a meat connoisseur, so I don't know how to tell the difference between a $100 steak and a, you know, $20 steak. Yeah, so our bill was like 120 bucks, And then, of course, you have to tip because it's rude. And, you know, I don't know, I don't know in Washington if, I know in some places, and I'm not trying to insult anybody who works in a restaurant. I'm genuinely curious. But I don't know, I know some places they will pay the restaurant staff, like the waiters and waitresses, under minimum wage. And so then they're kind of surviving on the tips. But I don't know if Washington does that. So if they're making minimum wage, which is 18, I think it's $18 here. And then I also have to tip, you know, 20%. Of course, there was a line for like a 35% tip. I'm like, uh, I am not that rich. Sorry. It's just, it's, I don't know. It's kind of frustrating because like, I, I, I don't, you know, and, and restaurants are, are different than a lot of things. I think when it comes to tipping, because yes, if you have a, if you have an amazing waiter or waitress, and, you know, they're getting what you need. They're, you know, checking on you. Yes, I will tip. But when I go somewhere and they do absolutely nothing and don't even refill my water, uh, I'm not giving you a tip. And I'm sorry that you, the restaurant does not pay you a living wage, but that is not my fault. I'm already paying more for, you know, the food and I'm getting less food. So, no, I don't know. Tipping culture is just... It's like when you go to a restaurant and you literally walk up to the counter, you order your food, you pay for your food, and then you sit down and you wait for food and there's a tip line. It's like, uh, no, no, I, I mean, if you're helping me with something extra, but I mean, isn't that, I don't know, isn't that kind of your job is to be there and doing that? So I'm not trying to be mean. I just, I feel like everything has gotten to a point where we have to pay more for less. And it just crinkers me something else. Where's that? So I think I did most of Mr. Green. Oh, no. I got some. So the one th I will say, this is an, I'm working on this sideways. So this is an N and then there's an M that is also green. And then the Z, which is a backward Z, that is also a green color. Uh, so, not a fan of that. Not a fan. I mean, it's it's not to the point where I'm completely messing up, but I do kind of have to pay more attention. Okay, there's that. So yeah, dinner out was, it was good, but yeah. <laughs> it's just no, I don't know. I always feel weird paying, like, I love eating out because I don't want to cook ever. Uh, but you're, you're spending money on something that you're only enjoying for, you know, the moments that you're eating it. And then that's it. Maybe I should learn how to cook more things, but that takes effort too. So, yeah. Okay, that is all of those ends, I think. There's probably more, but it's okay. I am not the cleanest diamond painter when I am talking. Let's see. I probably don't need that many of these. I should take all these, what do you call it, dryer sheets out. But I have painting recently that had static after I kitted it up when I thought the static was gone. So I don't know. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave them in there. <laughs> They're not hurting anyone. They just try to escape every time I pour my drills. Let's see, does that one have a tab? Ooh, yeah, see that one has a, oh, you can't see it. Nope, 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 nope. I had the auto lock on. See, it's fine. I promise you it has a tab. So it's going over there. It is going on the tray. Get in there. 
No, over there, please. There's that. And I have two packages coming this week. And I have no idea who or what they're coming from because it just says, like, it'll say, oh, Shopify or package carrier. And I'm like, well, that's that's ambiguous. Thank you for that. I think that's an M. Well, I'll get that in later. Let's do some purples because I am a Wanting some bright and happy colors. I probably didn't need that many, but that's okay. Yeah. Oh, so I did mention, I don't know, it was, eh, probably a month or so ago, there was a there was a guy in a park in downtown Seattle. And he had built himself his own little shack. Little he called it a cabin, but it was made from, you know, cardboard and discarded wood. And uh, he was doing it illegally, obviously, because you're not really supposed to build yourself a cabin in a public park. He got arrested several times because he stole an excavator and said he was mining for gold in the side of a hill in a public park. <laughs> uh, but he got arrested again, guys. Third time he got arrested because he went back to the park, even though he's banned from the parks for... I don't know if it was a year or longer because he started to build his cabin again <laughs> i was like oh my gosh seriously that's my tax dollars man we can't feed the school children but we're going to spend money on on banning somebody from the public park and having to clean up the makeshift cabin that he decided to build again awesome <laughs> Thanks, Washington. You're so great. So, which I don't, you know, so we have the, I think we have the highest gas prices in the United States. I'm not sure if that includes Alaska and Hawaii and Puerto Rico, um, but we have the highest gas. So I filled up my tank. Five, oops, I missed a five. Um, I filled up my tank. It was $4.70 a gallon. And my car holds mm, probably 20 gallons. Uh, it's disgusting. And, you know, they say, oh yeah, you know, the gas is, it's for the, you know, so we can fix the roads, so we can do this. But then why are all the roads around my house complete garbage? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Because they are full of potholes. They are a mess. I mean, I don't know. I know, I know that a lot of times I feel like all the tax money tends to just go to downtown Seattle because that's where they think everybody in the state of Washington lives. But it's not really the case. There's a lot of people who would not be caught dead living downtown Seattle. Number one, you can't afford it. And, uh, I don't, I don't feel safe going down there. Uh, so I would not want to live down there at all way too much crime and just i mean the homeless situation is just so out of hand and there's no there's no right way to deal with it i mean because i mean I, i'm not saying i know how to fix it because it is a it is a problem and i i don't know what the answer is and I feel, I, I mean, I honestly feel bad for some of these politicians, not all of them, but some of them. Oh my gosh. Uh, but so this is my AB pen. So as you can see, it's a super old glue dot and I just pick up my ABs and it does not rip off the coating because there's so much AB coating on the pen already uh, that it just, it does what it needs to do. Uh, but yeah, no, it's... Mm. I mean, they've tried, you know, having, you know, like little, you know, tiny housing, housing villages and they've purchased hotels and apartment complexes and, you know, they have tried and, you know, people who, you know, are homeless. I mean, there's a lot of people who don't, they don't want help. You know, they're, you know, they're on drugs. They, they don't want help. They're, they're happy living their lives how they are, but there are people who actually would accept help. But the problem is a lot of the the shelters sometimes they're you know like women and children only or you know they have rules and stipulations like you know you can't be 
you can't be on drugs. You can't have any alcohol in your system, which I don't know how they check those things. But a lot of them, they, people will say that, no, it's, it, you feel unsafe staying in those places and, or they're dirty or there's no beds or, you know, whatever the reason may be. So it, there's no, there's no perfect solution. And I just, I feel for people, excuse you, could you, he is literally trying to take the drill bottle out of my tray. Um, I mean, you around where I live right now, and we don't live in a fancy area. I mean, the, you could probably get an apartment in a not so nice area for maybe $1,500 a month, which is crazy that it's so expensive. So I can see how people you know, if they become homeless because of, you know, they lose a job, they can't pay their bills. I, I don't even know how people would get back on their feet. I really don't. So we had a, ugh, I don't even want to talk about it, but it's just, it's really on my, it's really on my mind and on my heart. But we had a, a online threat to our high school. And, uh, yeah, I've, I've been a mess. My poor kid has, you know, anxiety. So he's been a mess. <sighs> you know, I mean, luckily, you know, somebody saw the threat online and reported it, but you know, still, and I know what happens. And the sad, depressing part is like, yeah, now I know what happens all the time and I know what happens everywhere, but you know, you don't, you don't pay attention to it as much when it's not close to you. Uh, so yeah, driving into school on Monday was, whew, it was, uh, it was tough. Um, and you know, the school can't give you much information about anything, even though, you know, kids talk. So pretty much most of the kids, you know, knew the person who said it and they know what was said. Uh, which didn't help my, 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 my warrior because <laughs> when, you know, a certain type of threat is like, you know, very scary. And it was interesting because I had just that day, I, when I was gardening, actually, I had, was listening to, um, the new Taylor Swift album and, uh, it was honestly making me feel uncomfortable and and i'm not trying to throw shade at taylor swift or anybody who likes taylor swift like please if you think that then i, I can't help you um this is just my thoughts and opinion it's my whip and chatty rant uh you know i was i was a fan of taylor you know her earlier days you know i guess the more the more lighthearted days <laughs> even after like the whole you know conway thing it 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 was okay I guess I like more light, upbeat music. I'm not into the uh, dark and tortured music. You know, I personally, personally me, uh, I tend, if I listen to things that are more depressing and sad with negative themes, I tend to feel sad or depressed or down. Um, so I tried listening to her new album and I was like, ah, uh, nope, nope. Because the first song I hear, she's talking about, uh, I don't, I don't want to use the words, but like unaliving yourself, let's say, or, you know, mentioning specific weapons that start with G and, um, just then like kind of, I don't know. I don't want to say glorifying drinking and alcoholism or, you know, using drugs. And I, I, I get sensitive about that topic just because I've seen a lot of people ruin their lives with drugs and alcohol. So I just, mm, it's kind of a, it's kind of a mm, uh, subject for me. But again, I'm, I'm not judging anyone for what they do. It's just, those are my feelings. Uh, so I couldn't, I, I, I tried listening to the whole album and I couldn't get through it. And plus just the whole, I don't know, there's like a lot of swearing. And I was like, really? I get it. She's an adult. She's going through her stuff. This is how she does it. Um, 
But it's really interesting how people praise her for being this genius, I guess, when I'm like, you're basically screaming F you over and over. I don't know. I don't see the genius in that. I really don't. But again, just my opinions. I, I, I like her earlier stuff. I just, this stuff was a little too dark for me. And there was a lot of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It was like, she's talking about, you know, like false gods and worshiping things and just like, I don't know. No, thank you. <laughs> so. And another thing that kind of like crept into my mind when I'm trying to listen to this is like, you know, you, I watched the, what is it? The, the Eras tour. I watched the video. I did not go because I am not rich. And there's lots of little girls that listen to her stuff that maybe parents are listening to it in the car. So the kids are hearing it. And, you know, obviously every parent gets to choose what their kids listen to. Uh, but I will not be letting my daughter listen to that because I don't need her listening to somebody like saying, if, if I don't get this, I'm just going to go and blank myself. Like, no, no. So yeah, I don't know. I was a little bummed, but it's fine. Again, my opinion, not judging anyone if you like it. I just can't listen to that kind of stuff because it, it puts me in a bad headspace. I know some people can listen to certain kinds of music and, um, and that's how you work out your emotions, you know, like good for you. I mean, everybody has to find what works for them. Like some people can, you know, watch scary movies and then go to bed. You know, I can't really, I don't know if I can really do that. I mean, but I can watch true crime and then I can go to bed at night. So not everybody can do that. So find what works for you. Please, nobody leave me any mean messages. I'm just, and I think it was partially, I got so, I don't want to say bent out of shape because, you know, my feelings are valid, obviously, just like your feelings are valid. Uh, but I think it was just right after that, that threat at the school, I, I probably was a little more on alert for, you know, negative, negative talk, negative Negative thinking. I don't know. I'm rambling now. That's fine. Uh, we also had parent-teacher conferences this week, and I almost missed our first conference because <laughs> I had written down the proper times on my planner, got out of bed, was drinking my coffee, just like, do-do-do, take my time, sit here, I look at the clock, and I'm like, I should go get ready. I still, I have to be there in 50 minutes. No dummy you don't have to be there in 50 minutes you have to be there in 15 minutes so uh, my husband was going with me <laughs> so i <laughs> leapt up the stairs i did not <laughs> i did not change certain parts of clothing i literally just like threw on a th changed my pants uh threw on a sweatshirt didn't even get to brush my teeth put up my hair up in a messy ponytail, didn't get to wash my face. He was like, I'll go start the car. So he starts the car. He's out there like, you know, waiting. And I'm just like running down the stairs and like saying like, oh, we'll be back. We're late. We're late. But yeah, we made it with uh, one minute to spare, which to me, because I am a habitually early person, we were 15 minutes late in my eyes because I should have been there at least 10 minutes early <laughs> just so I can kind of, you know, collect myself and be calm and all the, all the stuff. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was not relaxing, <laughs> but otherwise it was fine. It's just, you know, I don't, I don't like rushing into things and feeling hectic and chaotic. That's not, that's not how I like to do things. <laughs> so yeah. But we made it. We made it, guys. I was I was impressed. I mean, and luckily we're not very far from the school, so that also helps. Okay, maybe black is not the best color to do. Because I cannot really see with the light reflecting where I am putting these. Mm, no. Okay, that's a fail. Fail, fail, fail. Come on. 
get out of there. Okay, what color are we going to do? How about let's do Mr. D. The D, D, D. Okay. Oopsie. All right, fine. Get out of there. Get out of there, Mr. Dryer Sheet. I will say the static guard to kit up was amazing. Oh, see, I don't know if I like that soda or not. Like, it tastes weirdly good, but then it tastes kind of weird. I don't know. I guess I'll have to drink the whole 12-pack and figure out if I like it or not. And I have not found the new. I think it may not be in stores until the 1st of May. But there's that one. Had... That one looked like it had a tab, but it doesn't. Uh, the new limited edition Dr. Pepper. The coconut, creamy coconut, which I don't know, man. I don't know. Willing to try it. But apparently, and I don't know what dirty soda is. Apparently it's a new thing or it's a popular thing. I don't go places, so I don't, I don't do popular things. But apparently it's like soda with, I don't know if it's like half and half or cream. And then like coconut and lime. Apparently the coffee creamer makers made a Dr. Pepper dirty soda like creamer thing but i looked for it and i never found it so i was like i don't know what the heck that is but yeah if you know what dirty soda is let me know <laughs> and i think somebody said too it's popular on college campuses especially ones that don't potentially serve alcohol so you can still have kind of like a fun drink but it's not you know an alcoholic drink like like, you know, like the Mormon campuses and stuff, they, they have to, they have some more rules, obviously. So I can't wait to, I can't wait to try the creamy coconut. But then what if it's amazing and then they stop selling it? Because then that'll just make me mad. Because that's what they do. They lure you in and then they crush your dreams. Speaking of crushed dreams, I went to Costco. <laughs> well, I love Costco. I, I love, I love to hate Costco. Uh, but my beloved rotisserie chicken does not come in the plastic hard shelled thing anymore. And it happened once before. It happened. I say it like it happened once before. Like I don't know how this happened. Uh, my husband brought one home. And I was like, well, that's weird. Maybe they just, you know, maybe they just ran out, which why would they have rotisserie chicken bags instead of hard shelled plastic things just in case they ran out? I don't know. My brain wasn't braining that day. Uh, so I went to Costco and I forgot to ask the people there because the one I'm not saying anything bad about Costco employees, just saying that now, but the Costco employees at the Costco I go to are well, most of them are not helpful. Uh, but they changed the, um, they changed the bag. And so I, or they changed into a bag. And so I Googled it because, you know, that's what we do. And the internet, the internet knows everything, guys. The internet told me that they did that because it uses, I think it said 75% less plastic than the harsh, hard shelled ones which is good i do like it when you know people are considering the environment because we use a lot of single use crap that just gets thrown into the landfill but don't even get me started on that because it's a whole nother chatty rant right there uh, but the problem is at least around us we could recycle the hard shelled you know which is rich chicken containers uh but the type of plastic that the bag is we can't recycle that we can only recycle very specific types of plastic even though i am in a like the most popular county in the state of washington who is like oh whoa, we're green we love green uh but you can't recycle that kind of plastic we have a service called Ridwell, and if they are only in certain areas, but they have additional things you can recycle. So 
you pay like a monthly fee and we can actually recycle the the stretchy plastic wrap we can recycle the um like potato chip bags coffee uh coffee ground bags you know like the ones with the shiny basically like they have a an extra service where you can recycle some of the things that you can't easily recycle like granola bar wrappers candy bar wrappers things that are i think they call it a not plastic film um something about mixed plastic i can't think of what it is off the top of my head uh, but my husband hates it because then it's like you know just one more step uh, but i feel better about it knowing that i'm not sending so much crap to the landfill uh, so in our ridwell thing we can recycle that costco chicken bag but not a lot of people can so uh, is that still gonna be going to the, the landfill but i guess they're using less plastic to make it so i don't know if that makes it better better i don't know it's hard to know i feel like every time we do something good it ends up like you know then something bad comes from it like there's the whole electric car debacle you know <laughs> it's like yeah i think electric cars could be good but the fact you have to mine these super uh, rare minerals from the earth in order to get these electric batteries and then they crap out after a certain amount of years how is that environmentally friendly so washington's trying to get rid of all gas like new gas powered cars by a certain year and i'm like yeah i don't see that happening but okay we will see we will see that is for sure and i cleaned i had a sparkling clean kitchen guys sparkling like the the level of clean that you don't even want to allow people to walk into your kitchen because you know just them breathing and existing in the kitchen will make it dirty and you'll have to clean it up if you know you know i had to cook dinner because you know i'm the adult and i was making like spaghetti and my spoon just leapt out of my hand i didn't i didn't drop it it jumped out of my hand and landed in the spaghetti sauce and got sauce everywhere and we have these stupid penny tile backsplash would never do that again oh my gosh like it's not lined up evenly because we have an old house so it looks all jagged and the grout probably is needing to be resealed or something so whenever anything gets near the grout and there's a lot of grout because it's a bunch of tiny little stupid circles uh, it looks dirty so what part of the kitchen do you think got the brunt of the spaghetti sauce that part i was like hmm so i was trying to make dinner trying to scrub the bright red spaghetti sauce out of the the grout i'm like this is why this is why people don't cook and clean <laughs> like nope I'm done i'm done and i haven't finished dinner yet that's great so but i got it clean but i got it all over myself which is fine because i don't wear nice looking clothes in the house because of that reason I always have my house clothes on because I am a mess. And I know some of you were like that too, which it just goes to show that peeps of a feather flock together. I wish I could wear clothes and not spill on myself. So when we went out to dinner, I was so freaked out because I was wearing a t-shirt that like it wasn't a nice t-shirt by any means, but it was not it's not a stained t-shirt and so i had my napkin and i just i i'm one of those people that will tuck the napkin into the neck of my shirt to try to protect my shirt and then i will ask for an additional napkin so i can put it in my lap <laughs> because i am that messy and it's not even like i'm trying it's just the food just jumps and leaps and it's a mess and i'm a mess and it's okay Okay, that 
not, am I missing a drill? No, it's just, it's hard to see if they're lined up properly when I'm doing this flat on my table because it's a little bit further away than I would like. So I will straighten that up. I promise you it will straighten up. It's just, you know, it's just me. All right, there's that. And, oh, my. I'm so thirsty. I don't know if I like that soda. <laughs> it's weird because it tastes, it doesn't quite taste like Dr. Pepper. It has a very, very strong strawberry flavor, but it's almost like a, like a strawberry hard candy. And I buy this, um, what do you call it? Uh, prebiotic soda. I bought some at Costco. I would not pay full price for it because I don't think it's worth it full price by any means, but it was at Costco and it was on sale. So I bought some. And one of the flavors in the, the pack that I bought, well, there were this, it was like a three pack. It was like a three pack of three different flavors. So it was Dr. Pop or Doc Pop, which is their like Dr. Pepper. Um, and it was, it wasn't bad, but it was, did not taste like Dr. Pepper, but I kind of liked it. Oh, geez. This one's super full. Okay. Then there was, uh, root beer. And then I think the third one was grape soda. Oh my gosh. I tried the grape soda one and I don't really like grape flavored anything. Whoa. I could not drink it. And I was trying to force myself to drink it just because they're not cheap. Um, it was cheaper at Costco, obviously. But it still was not cheap. But I was like, oh, hell no. That is nasty. Blech. So, yeah. But I figure if I can get some probiotic, prebiotic. Not entirely sure what the prebiotic actually means. I was going to look it up. And then I got distracted. And I never did. Is there a light colored color? Light colored color? Maybe I'll do some of the Z's. So, yeah. There's... Yes, make sure. Because the N's and the Z's, I don't need to be mixing those up. I will make sure to, to share pictures with you guys when I do finally get my, um, what do you call it? When, when the garden, the garden, the garden coach, <laughs> put me in coach, uh, when they come and do it. But it probably is not for a few weeks. And I got notice that our, our new front door and back door are almost ready to be installed, which is exciting. Maybe we can have an energy efficient door for the first time ever. Because um, we had to special order them because they are weird sizes because the person who built this house did not make the, the outside doors standard sizes so you have to have them specially made which is code for cost more money so i will definitely share that when when it happens i'm excited because our front door has these glass like in i don't think it's inlays but there's like glass parts of the the door um, but it's a textured glass. It kind of looks like yellow, like yellow bottles, like the bottom of bottles, you know. But the problem is, is that one of them, one of the doors, because it's a double door. So if I can explain it. So like one door, right? Here's this door. Here's this door. This door, the, the bottles are lined up. Like the circles are lined up like this, right? Great, grand, wonderful. This door, they're lined up on a diagonal. So once you see it, you can't unsee it. And I've been seeing it for over seven years and I'm done. <laughs> I was like, thank you. Because most people don't notice it. But then, of course, I pointed out, and I'm like, do you see that the windows are crooked? 
My husband's like, why do you tell people that? I'm like, because I want them to see it. He's like, why? I'm like, I don't know. Misery loves company. I have no idea. In my brain, it's something that needs to be shouted from the rooftops. I don't know why I do things. I just do them. I mean, it's not like I'm going to say, hey, do you want to see the spot where we buried one of our cats? I'm not doing that. I'm just trying to show them the window. The, the crooked, the crooked window. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's me, though. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, my goodness. So if you're still here, <laughs> congratulations. Uh, and stay tuned because there will be, I mentioned this before, a, um, a collaboration of sorts. What? I just totally forgot what letter I was doing. That's never good. I did that the other day and I had to pick off a bunch of squirrel fur color. Um, but the collaboration will be um, very peep-tastic. I'm just going to say that. That's all I am going to say. So yes, to wrap up Mr. Video, because we are going... We're going long and strong. I don't want to get the friction on. Sorry, guys. Um, okay. Yep, overstepping. If you want the newest Pippi sticker, fill out the form in the description box. I will probably not be mailing any for about a week. Got a lot going on this upcoming week. So, you know, be patient. They will go when they go. I think, I think that's all those, but I probably miss them, but that's okay. So I am going to say goodbye. And Duncan, you want to say, oh, you want to say goodbye? Nope. He does, but he doesn't. It's okay. Here, I'll um, zoom you out, maybe. No? You want to say goodbye? You want to say goodbye to your adoring fans? Nope. Nope. All right. Once again, I can't just end a video smoothly. It's got to be awkward. Oh, now the other cat's meowing. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. If you haven't liked and subscribed and you are still here, you might as well do it. We're a mess, but we're a fun mess. And until next time, big awkward hugs. Bye, guys.